Stave with Taboo Customs. Today we're going to look at the installation of our rust repair kit for the YJ rear frame front spring hanger area of the frame. The YJs tend to have an issue in a couple of areas here at the front spring hanger. One area will be what you're going to see here. You can see how far this rust has gone up into the frame. Now, in other frames, what we have seen is we've seen more rust down in here. So your frame may look like this or you may notice more of the rust down in here. Even to a point to where this spring hanger can actually break away from the frame and we've seen them push up into the frame. So to do our repair, we've actually had to pull them down before, before we could install our kit. To start our install, we've had to remove a few items from the Jeep. We've removed the fuel tank from the Jeep. We've disconnected the fuel lines and removed them from the clips along the frame, one on top of the shock bracket, one on top of the bracket for the parking brake lines, and then the two along the sides of the frame. Once we did that, we pulled them as far away from this side of the frame as we could, and we capped them to make sure we don't have any issues with any fuel. We've also loosened the brake line from all of those same brackets. Then we've removed the shocks and we've removed the fuel filter and the small line that went from the fuel filter to the tank. Now with the shocks, we have removed the shock because it is easier to get in here and weld. And also with this Jeep, we're actually going to go in and do our shock bracket, the upper shock bracket replacement kit on this, which will be covered in detail in, in, a, in another video. We've also had to remove the fuel filter guard down here and we did have a couple of the bolts break off when we removed that. Now the next step is removing this, uh, the br parking brake lines and the parking brake bracket. This bracket has to come off to be able to install our kit along this frame as well as we still have to unbolt our fuel filter mount here. The next step now is we've got to remove our parking brake lines. Now this parking brake is uh, it's in a bit of a need of adjustment. Uh, some of the brakes, if they're tighter than this, you might have to loosen this nut so you have the ability to pull these loose. But with this one, it's loose enough that we're able to just pop these out of the parking brake bracket. Maybe. So, um, then you have three tabs on, each, on this side of the parking brake. To remove that, you'll have to push each one of these tabs in, and they have to be in simultaneously to get these lines out of the bracket. Now, you can typically push one in and be able to, you know, kind of wiggle this out and then push another one in and wiggle it out. Or you can try to use something like a zip tie to go around here and try to pull them all in at once to pull it out. Now, before before we cut this bracket off, one of the things we're going to want to do is go up here and mark on the bottom of the body where that bracket is because after we're done with the installation of our kit, we're going to have to go in and reinstall this bracket so we have something that holds some brake lines. So now we've cut our bracket off of the inside and we'll need to retain this bracket because later on when we plate the inside of the frame, we're going to, we're going to reuse this bracket. Now, we showed you the driver's side because the driver's side is more complicated than the passenger side. Obviously, if you're doing the passenger side, you don't have to worry about the fuel filter, you don't have to worry about this bracket. There's quite a bit you don't have to worry about because it, there's nothing really mounted to the inside of the frame over there, but you will have to deal with the muffler and the exhaust possibly because they could be in the way. Now, with that done, we can start to work on cleaning up the frame to prepare to tack the plates on. The first we'll do is we'll start with the outside plate. Take the plate, clamp it to the outside of the frame, and the main thing we're just doing here is we're just marking out the outside perimeter of the plate with a piece of chalk so that we know where to clean up the frame at. With that, we'll also keep in mind that once we get this welded up, we're going to take and put some additional diamond shaped plates here. So you're going to have to make sure you clean up the inside and the outside of this bottom part, part of this uh, body mount pretty good. If you want to get, we're going to want to get a decent weld on both sides. Now the reason for that is that we're trying to add some strength in here because when you make this plate and you see we have to make it pretty thin at the bottom. So we want to try to go in there and make sure we get good welds between these two sides to add the strength back in. 
So now that we've got our plate marked out, we'll prepare to clean up the rust on the plate. We'll use a lot of different tools to do this. Uh, the first thing we'll typically try to do is try to remove some of the thicker, heavier scale. To do that, we'll either use a hammer or a needle scaler if you have a needle scaler. Then after that, we'll go in with a, a wire wheel and we'll clean up the rest of the, the loose rust that's on the frame that we can take off with the wire wheel. And then we might end up actually going in and marking our plates again and taking die grinders and actually making sure that we grind down these marks to good metal to make sure we get a good weld because the more time spent doing this, it'll make it easier when you do get to the welding portion. Now one area like we mentioned earlier, you want to try to focus on is this area down here at the bottom of the body mount. Now we don't really worry about the rest of the body mount because we probably won't even try to put a weld between the body mount and this, and this plate except where this is at because it's so difficult to get in there and try to get it very clean in that corner especially on the inside. Just like the outside of the frame we're going to need to come to the inside of the frame and mark out the frame uh, where we're going to clean it up for welding but before we do that we're going to take a look at some of the mounting holes here and what we need to do with that. So on the plate there are four holes that are located in the same locations as the mounting holes in the frame. Now on our frame here we had two bolts that did come out cleanly so in those two locations we still have fairly thick frame there. We're going to reuse those two holes and we're not going to weld any nuts on the back side of them. But these other two holes here the heads broke off of the nuts so we're going to cut those areas of the frame out and then we are going to take and use the nuts that came in the, f in the kit and we're going to weld those nuts on the back side of this plate so we have a place to bolt our mount and our guard too. Now the first thing we can do obviously is put this plate up here. The plate will end up getting butted up close to the bottom of the weld for the shock mount. Now if you are removing this shock mount you'll want to remove it before you tack this plate on. Uh, but you still will end up putting this this plate close to the same location and then the shock mount plate that comes with the kit will actually butt up against this plate so you can weld the two together. Now we'll go in and just like the outside mark where roughly where we're going to be welding. And then the other thing we're also going to do is we're also going to mark which side of this plate is the outside however you want to mark it and I'm going to mark which holes I'm welding nuts too. Now after this we can pull this plate off, use the bolts and the nuts to weld the nuts to the inside of the plate. Just make sure that you do weld them to the inside of the plate and not the outside of the plate. Alright so we've gone in, we've cleaned up the frame, we've cleaned up the perimeter of where the outside plate and the inside plates would go as well as some areas in the bottom preparing for us to install those bottom plates in the future here. So now we've also gone in, we've cut out some of the bottom frame here because the areas here really weren't going to do much for us and they were completely rusted out. Now with these kits, the kits are made up to cover you know, most of what you're going to see in a standard frame rust repair. There may be issues at times, especially once you start getting down here to the, the center section of the Jeep where the center section of the frame will rust out. That would be a different kit. So you may have to get additional kits or you may need to get some additional little plates to help to supplement this kit to, to be able to cover all of the rust that you can. Now with this kit, the kit is actually designed to go over the spring hanger. Now the reason we're doing that is you can see like in this Jeep here, the rust is really back here. It's not, not up here. Now you will often in some frames have rust up here. Um, and even with that, I mean, oftentimes I've really only seen one Jeep where the spring hanger really broke loose. Now I'd like to retain the strength that the spring hanger already has, so with that, we decided that our, with our kit, we're going to go over the spring hanger. That way we're just adding, we're reinforcing that spring hanger to the frame. Now with this plate, once you have it up there, you can either clamp it with some C-clamps or you can use like a R11 vice grip, come in here, clamp it in. The vice grip might be easiest to use, especially at the beginning. Um, and then you can use your C-clamps later on. They're more important to pull the two sides of the frame together. But once you get the, uh, 
the outside plate clamped on there, you can just use your hammer, tap it into place. And the main thing is you're trying to flush up the bottom of the frame with the plate. Now once you have it uh, moved into place, you can take clamps you know, clamp it a little bit closer and then go ahead and put a couple tacks on here. Now at the front, the frame will start to actually bend inward. So you'll need to take that, that piece in the front and actually bend it down to the frame. Okay, so we've got the outside plate tacked to the frame. Now we're ready to do the same thing to the inside plate. Now, as I mentioned earlier, one of the things to make sure that you do correctly on the inside plate is that make sure you put any of the nuts that you're going to weld to the inside plate on the correct side. Now, in our haste, we weld the nuts to the wrong side. Now, luckily, we can cut new plates. So, we cut some new plates, welded the nuts to the correct side this time, and we can get ready to put it up here. Now you see I've had to cut out some of the frame to be able to clear these nuts on the back side. Also make sure you clean up any spatter on the back side of this plate so it sits flat, flat and flush to the frame. You can also see that we've removed the upper shock mount bracket because on this Jeep we are going to replace this bracket. And you can actually see here what happens with those brackets where they collect all those all the debris inside that bracket and how a huge hole will actually develop in our kit will take care of that but that's in another video so with this bracket here you can do the same thing as the outside with one major exception we want to make sure any holes that we are going to reuse line up correctly so we'll use those holes as a guide and if, if the shock bracket was still here, this, this angle here would actually be pretty close to the weld. We use these hold as, holes as a guide, use our existing bolts, which in the end we're actually going to replace these bolts with new bolts when we do, do the final upfit. I'm not going to tighten them a ton yet because what I want to do is line it up here in the back because even with those bolts in there you can see we have a bit of play so now we're going to want to do the same things we did on the outside we'll clamp it in place line it up with the bottom of the frame and it's especially important for this because we'll actually be putting a bottom piece of the frame that has bolt or excuse me nuts in it for the fuel fill guard and we'll need to make sure that lines up and then we'll do that in our next step so we can go ahead and use our clamp And now we can use our hammer to tap this into place to make sure that it lines up with the bottom of the frame um, in front and behind the spring mount. Then again, as we mentioned up here, you will have to probably clamp this area at the front part of this plate because the frame does start to bend in and you'll need that, that piece to actually bend with the frame. So we've got our inside plate tacked to the frame and now we're ready to start installing the bottom plate. Now this can be one of the trickier parts and that's because the, uh, the fuel fill guard here, excuse me, the fuel filter guard, has to bolt to both the inside of the frame and the bottom of the frame. So our plate here already has a couple of holes in it. Now you're going to want to make sure that these holes are to the inside of the frame and that the nuts are welded on the correct side. So put the nuts inside the frame. And we've already gone and welded our nuts on the inside of these, this piece in the correct position so we don't have to recut this one. Um, so the easiest way to start this, this plate will get butted up against the back of the spring hanger. And then we'll need to start bending this. Now you can bend this by hand but you need to find something to leverage it with. Um, down here we can actually fit it between the shock bracket and the spring and just start putting small bends in it as you go. And it, they don't need to be incredibly accurate as you can go and adjust this once you have start having it tacked in place.
Okay, so you can see we've roughly got it uh, about correct. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we're gonna tack this in. We'll just tack it here. We want to tack it to the inside plate. And we try to get the, the top of this bottom plate flush with the bottom edge of the inside plate. And we'll tack it in. And then we'll check and see that our, our guard fits up correctly. Now being that you know, you're obviously rebuilding this, if it doesn't fit correctly, you can open the holes up in your guard a little bit. Or if you're using a guard that comes uh, that we have made for you, uh, the holes are actually slotted to give you a little bit of leeway as far as where the, where the bolts are going. Okay, now that we've got our bottom bracket plate pretty much contoured to the frame how we, how we want it, we can uh, then take our original fuel fill guard or the new fuel fill guard if you're getting one from us, bolt it to the bottom plate. Okay, so it's bolted to the bottom plate. Now we can take and we can bolt this into the side plate, the inside plate. And the main thing that we're after here is alignment. Now as mentioned, if you do have a hole that's off a little bit, you might have to take and re-drill one of these holes. This hole here is actually off a hair, so we'll actually take and we'll open this hole up a little bit until we can get this plate bolted in. Now once we get it bolted in, we'll then make sure we have a good edge. Now that might mean pulling the bottom plate over a little bit, but at, but once you do finally install this, this will bend a little bit over to the, to the uh, inside plate, so that will be fine but you do want to pull it over to the inside plate this bottom plate and then you can start to tack your plate in okay so one thing we noticed while we're getting ready to start tacking this up and you want to check this now the bottom plate here has a large slot that large slot is for drainage from the frame something that the original frame didn't have and that's part of the reason that it rusted out now if you're frame hasn't rusted out in that area like this one actually has a section that covers that hole up go in and cut that section out so you can make sure that you have good drainage out of that slot and in future kits will actually be moving this slot forward a little bit okay so you can see that we've gotten this tacked in here at the front now if you get this this pattern here in the correct location you're going to be really close to getting this pattern back here so you don't necessarily have to tack all the way back what you can do is pull the bracket pull the the, the guard off and then go ahead and tack it afterwards so you can see we've actually had to pull this up with a, a vice grip clamp here to get our joint to where it looks pretty good now what we're going to do is we'll actually put a tack here and we're going to come back and you see how there's a little gap there we're going to close that gap up put another tack and then finally put a tack back here once we close this little gap up and then after that we'll move to the outside and we'll need to start pulling these two plates inward so that we can attach it to the outside plate so for the next step now we will want to bring this plate over the inside plate over to the outside plate so that we can start to get a good joint here to tack it closed so you right now we have about uh, eighth inch three sixteenths of a gap this is where a good C-clamp comes into play. One that you can really put on here and crank down and it's not going to strip out or bend or break. Put this on here you clamp it down until you close up that gap there and then you can start to tack along that joint here moving your way all the way down the frame until you get to the spring hanger. Four plates here. These four plates are used around the body mount and around the rear spring hanger. If you have an older kit, you're going to have one of each of these plates. If you have a newer kit, you're actually only going to have two of these instead of the one that looks like a larger diamond. Now, the way these work, the one that's a, a larger diamond here with the, without the ends cut off will go on the front. It goes up around the body mount 
And now with these body mounts, I had to clean up a lot of spatter from the OEM welding, so you may have to go in there and clean up that. You can use a hammer, get it up in there, make sure it's flat against the plate. This is the reason why we want to make sure we clean the body mount on the inside and the outside fairly well. And then we can, once we have these in place, we can weld these solid. Now for the rear one, the reason the ends are cut off are these small plates here. Now these small plates are used to tie in the back of the spring hanger to the outside, the inside, and the bottom plates. The area that's thicker here will actually go up against the back side of the spring hanger. That way you can weld to the spring hanger, to the outside plate, and then across the bottom. Now there are two of those small L-shaped plates so that you can put one on the inside and one on the outside. So once you have all of these plates in place, you can weld them solid. So the final bracket that we're going to install is we're going to have to reinstall the parking brake bracket on the inside of the frame. With the kit, you're going to have two small gussets that will be in there. And these are the gussets that we'll use to help reinforce this bracket because we will not be able to re-weld this top piece to the top of the frame because we've added some space between that original frame and our new plate. So with this bracket we've already taken, we've cleaned up the bracket here at the front bottom. This is the front of the bracket with the direction this is pointing here. We've welded this piece here and then we've welded another one at the top of the rear that's pretty much in line with the top hole. Now once you have those in place, you can use where we've cut off the top of this bracket from the frame and the mark on the body to help align the, the bracket front to rear and height wise on the frame. Once you have that bracket pretty much where you want it in place, you can go ahead and tack it in there and then weld it. However, you are going to want to make sure you do install this bracket after you solid weld the top and the bottom of this inside plate because it's a lot easier to get to these without this bracket in the way. So we've got our kit all welded to our frame solid. Um, basically with this kit you'll want to weld it anywhere you can. There are some areas that we do not weld just because they're, uh, in, you're unable to get to those areas. You're really unable to clean those areas. One of those areas is inside of here now. You could take this body mount and remove it and clean that up better. Uh, but honestly this is strong enough the way as it is. Um, with adding these plates in here, you're adding a lot of reinforcement back into this frame, so, so the frame is strong. Now, in areas, you are going to run into places where the frame is going to be thinner than others, and you're going to run the risk of blowing out. You know, this area back here was one. Typically, the bottom of the frame, almost anywhere, is an area that you're going to have trouble welding. What we will typically do is we'll go in there and we'll put little tack welds, one right next to the other. And then after we put those tack welds, we'll go back and we'll weld over all of those tacks with one solid weld. What that does is it helps to give us areas to bridge over as we do a full weld down that to tie in the plate to the frame and, and, and to try to you know, eliminate the risk of blowing through the frame. Now, if you do blow through the frame, just stop and if you can start putting tacks along the crater of the frame until you basically fill a, that area that's blown out. Now, if it's really bad and you're blowing out a lot, it's probably an area that you need to go in and reinforce. All right, so we've also welded in our, our inside plate solid. Uh, we've welded in our brackets that will reinforce the spring hanger, our front bottom plate, and our uh, parking brake uh, bracket here for the lines for the parking brake. Again, you know, areas at the bottom, uh, near the bottom of the frame, probably going to have some trouble with when you go in and weld them. Just take your time uh, when you are welding those. Uh, one thing we did want to mention is if you are reusing the stock fuel filter guard, because we did add a material thickness here of this material since it's on the bottom, there's a fair chance that your holes in the side here may not fully line up. Uh, you do have a couple options. You can go in and drill this hole or, or this hole out larger. Um, or since these, these, this, uh, this guard really doesn't come very close to the fuel filter, it sits right in here, um, you can take and bend 
this tab with a pair of pliers or a crescent wrench to try to bring it up to that hole. Now if you are using our, uh, our guard for the fuel filter, we actually slotted the holes so you shouldn't have to worry about that. They should line up uh, pretty easily when you put that, uh, put that up there and uh, you'll be able to bolt that uh, guard back into place pretty easily. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this helped out with the uh, installation of your kit or if you were looking to see what our kits cover, this helped you to show what the kit does actually contain and what areas of the Jeep it does cover. If you are looking to purchase a kit, you can visit taboocustoms.com. We'll have our kits available there. Or if you have a question or comment or concern with your kit, please go there and click the contact us button and send us an email and we'll get right back to you. So thanks for watching. And as always, like or subscribe.